Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk and the first video of uh, introduction to SOA Suite. In this SOA series, I am going to explain end-to-end -end knowledge about the SOA. From the beginning, what exactly is SOA? What are the key components of SOA? And how we do the deployments in SOA Suite of the composites and then how we install the SOA Suite and then when, it's, when we talk about the troubleshooting, then how we can do the troubleshooting. So there would be a long series of this SOA as well just like the weblogic okay so this is the first part and if you wanted to be an expert in SOA uh, then be with me and stay tuned and then subscribe for my channel okay and I will be publishing the, some more interesting SOA videos soon so let us begin with the part one of SOA where it, I will explain what exactly is SOA and what are the key benefits of using the SOA okay so before that when we go into the discussion of what exactly is SOA there are three important concepts that you have to be clear the one is the enterprise second is object oriented programming and third is monolithic and microservices architecture okay so these are very uh, common terms and very small and understandable terms okay which is get implemented in the soa suite okay so let us talk about what exactly is uh, object oriented programming okay so it is very clear even if you have uh, some sort of knowledge of any of the programming languages okay which we have learned during your college or during your some diploma or engineering okay then what exactly is object oriented programming it is a concept of the reusing the code right that means when we are writing a code we should write in a way that if that code part is need to be executed in some other applications or some other programs or maybe inside the same programs multiple times we should execute we should write it once and then execute at multiple times right for that we have a different kind of procedures and functions right for that so that we can write the program at once and then with the help of functions and some different available options we can execute that code at multiple places without rewriting the code Right. For example, we have a payment module in all of the applications. Okay. So if we have an enterprise application where uh, you have enabled the payment for the end users and that payment need to be uh, executed at multiple places. So you can have a separate payment module which you can call inside your application at multiple places. So this is the simple concept of object oriented programming. And in a nutshell, you can say that the important concept here is the reusability of the code. Now, second is the enterprise world. So this is again a very interesting topic. Okay, so now we are in a digital world where everything is connected. So when we say that everything is connected, that means they are doing the communication with each other, whether they are humans or non-humans, okay, machines, they are connected with either other and then they are talking to each other. That means they are sharing some data with each other with the help of different formats. Okay, for example, if we take the example of uh, our enterprise world in, in a certain uh, particular sector, for example, manufacturing, okay, so in manufacturing, if I take the example of supply chain, right? So 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 you have a lot of stakeholders there. So you have internal stakeholders, okay? Your employees or some other internal stakeholders. And then you have a business partners as well. That is for external stakeholders, right? And they all are connected with each other with the help of enterprise application. So you may be running the business in a particular city or maybe in a particular country or maybe abroad across the world right so that means you have a multiple partners you have a multiple internal partners you have multiple external partners right they are all are connected with each other at real time they are connected with each other 24 plus 7 and they are exchanging the data or messages with each other so in a manufacturing department or in a manufacturing sector okay you have a manufacturing department then you have a different suppliers and apart from the suppliers you will have a transport and logistic department apart from that you have a hr department sales department you have internal employees you have a finance department analytics and reportings and then and you have a customers as well and everyone is connected with each other at the real time they are exchanging the data and information with each other and they all all other departments are dependent on each other for example your manufacturing is dependent on the suppliers because when the suppliers will send the raw material then your manufacturing department can able to manufacture the product and your supplier and, manu and your manufacturing department is directly uh, related with the hr departments because the hr or human resource department will hire the resources for their for your business needs who will work on the actual manufacturing and then uh, you have a sales department sales department will uh, generate the customers for you Right. They will arrange the customers for you and based on the customers, you will arrange or you will do the manufacturing, right? So similarly, when you have a, a manufacturing, then you have to supply that to a different location for that you have a transport and logistic department. That means everything is connected with each other. They are communicating with each other, talking to each other 24 plus 7 
and when we say that we have such a large system in place okay so this is defined as an enterprise world and same uh, example you can take from the e-commerce as well so now what is the key point here when we talk about the enterprise world that is the multiple integrations because we have multiple stakeholders multiple applications and all of the applications is not like that they are uh, developed in the same language or it's not possible that all of the stakeholders across the world using the same set of software right even for the erp as well enterprise resource planning as well so that means we have a different applications talking to each other the applications are developed in different languages different platforms but still they need to be communicated with each other with the help of integrating to each other and this is called multiple integrations that's this is the second concept now third is the monolithic and microservices architecture so if you go back to some years uh, go back some years back okay so how we were developing the application in a way that we have a organization we want to do the automation of our organization for that we have to do a development of a certain kind of a code or we maybe may, we maybe need to do a certain kind of a software okay so the way we were doing the development is that for the entire business need we were developing a single system right so that means i have done automation of my organization i have developed and deployed my application okay but what was the problem with that the problem was in case of any maintenance of any outage or any kinds of upgrade or changes you have to bring down the complete system even you have a different kind of a department they are independent of each other that means if we have a uh, problem in one department that one department is not working properly due to certain reasons the other departments can continue their works okay so another example you can take from the transportation for example there is a uh, uh registration transport department right you have a vehicle registration department there you have a driving license department there you have a vehicle fitness department is there so all three departments are independent of each other that means if you have a certain problem with the vehicle registration then your driving license and vehicle fitness can run easily if you have a problem with the driving license department then you can run the vehicle registration and fitness separately right so the earlier what the way we were doing is that if we have a problem with the registration department then okay we have to do certain kind of changes in the registration department application but we have a one monolithic application so we have to bring down the complete system that means i am doing the change in my vehicle registration application but i have to bring down the driving license and vehicle fitness application as well which is an unnecessary outage for the other applications right so this was the way we were doing the development but now when we talk about the microservices so what we are doing in microservices is that we are developing the application as a small micro modules okay because as i said we have a different kind of a department that if we know that they are independent of each other and in case of any problem with the one department other can work easily independently so for that we are doing the development in microservices that means we are developing a small small code like for example we have a 15 department then we are developing a 15 code different code for the 15 department that we we can define as a microservices and they would have their own database separate database for data they may have a dependency of a certain kind of a data like one department may need the data from the other department that functionality may get impacted if any of the microservices get impacted but all of the functional functionalities will not get impacted in that case so this is something about micro services so now what is the challenge in case of micro services now you can say that one monolithic application is now divided into multiple micro services multiple databases that means they need to be integrated with each other that means you need a certain kind of a solution which can integrate all of your micro services together and what is the solution for that that is a service oriented architecture which is called a soa suite okay so this is an option for you to integrate your micro services or multiple services with each other okay for whatever the reason they are talking to each other now what are the benefits of that one we will discuss in next few slides so now this will make the system loosely coupled system why we call it as a loosely coupled if we have a problem with any of the micro services that can be upgraded or that can be shut down independently independently of the other applications this is this make the system as loosely coupled so now we are clear on the enterprise now we are clear on the object oriented programming and then monolithic and microservices architecture and now let us begin with the soa suite concept so now what we understand from the previous discussion is that we have two important things here one is the services and second is the messages that means whatever the code that we are developing we are exposing that as a service okay and then apart from that the services are talking to each other and they are exchanging the messages right so now what is the problem what is the problem here what is the problem here is that we have multiple services that are talking to each other okay and what application is developing so that we can have a application with the same design so we don't like that the application of the Chinese or the Chinese that they want to talk to each other but the Chinese don't want to talk to each other Chinese and then we can have a 
Similarly, if you compare it with the SOVA, if you talk about the before SOVA situation, then you have SOVA and then you are to talk to each other, then they will be integrated by one-to-one -one relationship. That means if I am uh, doing integration of my target, that means I am doing the, some code change in my source application. And similarly, I am doing the code change in my target application so that they can exchange the data. Now, suppose tomorrow that one more target in, uh, added. In that again you are going to change your code in the source and again you are going to change the new target and then you will integrate similarly if you have a new target in future and there could be one more source in the future there could be a uh, few more sources a lot of more sources in the future there could be a lot of target in the future so how you are going to handle this kind of situation it's not possible for you every time you have a new target or every time you have a new source every time you are going to update your code to integrate your source or to integrate your target where you have a such number of huge number of sources and targeted it's not feasible right so the solution for that is a SOA that is called service oriented architecture that means you have a source and then you have a target you want to integrate them with each other for exchanging of data then you can have a mediator application in between both that is called a SOA so in that case even you have a multiple sources you have a multiple targets so your sources will or, or your target will only integrate with the SOA application so that means you don't need to change the code at the source side you don't need to change code at the target side every time whenever you have a new source every time you have a new target you need to just plug in and plug out from the SOA service oriented architecture component if you wanted to integrate uh, one SOA with any target you have to plug in your source with the SOA and similarly you have to plug in your target with the SOA and that's it it will do it will do all work for you so what does it mean SOA is for integration capture route and transformation so one important word key keyword here is transformation so integration you are very clear capture you are very clear and then route is also very clear they are routing the messages from one application to different application after capturing when the integration is in place now you have to do a transformation so i will explain what exactly is a transformation so now suppose that again as i said you have a source and a target and you have mediator so application in between right so your source could be in the java application and the target could be in the dot and application so when they are talking to each other they have to understand each other right so java is a different uh, set of programming language dot net is again a different set of programming language but when they are talking to each other as i have explained in the one is the japanese and the second is the chinese and there you need a trans, uh, translator in between right for exchanging the messages right similarly if, if your Java application is the, uh, need to talk to dot and application, there would be a certain kind of a transformation needed in between so that your dot and application can understand the message from Java. And similarly, your Java can understand the message from dotnet. So it is the work of SOA. So it does the transformation as well so that they can understand each other. Similarly, if you have multiple sources, multiple targets, they need to talk to each other, then everything is get connected with the help of SOA in the between and they can exchange the data and the, even the SOA can do the transformation for each and every source and for each and every target. So now what are the key benefits here is the loose coupling. That means as I said, now we have a microservice architecture. So any of the component can plug in and plug out any time flexibility because you have a microservice architecture you have a lot of flexibility in terms of component you can replace any component you can upgrade any component anytime without impacting the other component service invitation so service can be invoked either synchronously or asynchronously so synchronously where you are you need the response immediately and asynchronously where you can send the message and then response you can get a later time productivity is getting increased right that means all of your integration is getting place uh, happening at the single place okay and then we create a SOA component application for the service component binding. And this is the concept that I'm going to explain in my second video about the service component composite applications and then the architecture of the composite. Easy maintenance and debugging because now we have only single component in between your all of the sources and targets are integrated with a single component. So the troubleshooting would be easier in that case, right? So what is SOA suite now? So SOA Suite is a middleware component of Oracle Fusion middleware. So from Oracle side, it is a part of Oracle Fusion middleware. SOA Suite is a market leading integration solution. As I explained, it is going to be integrate your multiple applications. So this is a solution for market leader as of today for the integration of applications. In SOA, many small services are designed and built. Okay, each service will operate independently and offer an API or way to interface with other services. SOA Suite provides a complete set of service infrastructure component for designing, deploying, and managing SOA composite applications. So in SOA, when we talk about the development of SOA applications, what exactly we do is we, de we develop the SOA composite applications. And SOA composite application is a 
set of lot of different soa sweet component okay and this i am going to explain in the second video now soa composite applications enable you to easily assemble multiple technologies component into one soa composite application so this soa composite application allow you to integrate multiple components at a single place in a single application okay so this is all about the soa sweet basic concepts and in second video i am going to talk about the soa key components and soa composite architecture so stay tuned for that video thanks very much for watching